How's it going everyone? This video is going to be about position sizing. Now a lot of people talk about the correlation between win rate and risk to reward, however what they don't talk about is proper position sizing. Now without proper position sizing, the correlation between win rate and risk to reward does not work out. So let's hop into a PDF and go over this. Now here we are with a win rate and risk to reward table. So what this shows is what win rate paired with what fixed risk to reward equals profitability. So for example here, if you have a 20% win rate and a 1 to 1 risk to reward, it's not profitable. However, if you have a 1 to 2 risk to reward with a 40% win rate, then you are profitable. Now this table only works out if you have the same risk per trade. Now why is that? Well let's take for example I'm using a fixed 1 to 2 R system and have an expected win rate of 50%. Assuming a risk of $1,000 per trade, if I take my first trade and it is a loser, I'm down 1 R or $1,000. Now if I take my next trade and it is a winner, keeping the same position size, risking $1,000, I'm up 2 R or $2,000. Adding those together, I'm up 1 R or $1,000. So you can see with a fixed 1 to 2 R system at a 50% win rate, it is profitable. Now let's say I was using the same fixed 1 to 2 R system with a 50% win rate. However, I was not keeping consistent position sizing. For example, on the first trade, instead of risking 1,000, I risk 2,000. After taking that loss, I am now down 2R or 2,000. But then on the next trade, when I'm risking 1,000 and hit a 2R trade, instead of being up 1R, I'm at break even. So you can see how this table only works out with consistent position sizing. Now, there are a few ways I can position size. I can look to keep my contract size the exact same, for example, risking two NQ contracts per trade. Or I can look to do a fixed dollar or fixed percentage, which is where I risk the same dollar value or same percentage value per trade. Let's hop into our first slide where we go over what it looks like to keep the contract size the same and why I prefer the other two methods. So let's take a look at using fixed contract size. So in this case, I'm going to be looking at using two NQ contracts for every trade or each scenario. In this first example, risking 20 points with two NQ contracts, that gives me a risk of $800. Here I'm risking 40 points with two NQ contracts, that gives me a risk of $1,600. Then here I'm risking 10 points with two NQ contracts, which gives me a risk of $400. So you can see that this risk size is all over the place and not consistent. So why is this a problem? Well, let's say we were to take a loss on these first two trades. Right, so on this first trade, minus 1R, minus 800. Right here, minus 1R, minus 1600. And then we win this last trade, which is a 4R trade. However, we are only risking $400, so we only make $1600. Due to the inconsistent sizing, although we should be up to R, we're down $800. Let's go to the next slide and see why I prefer fixed dollar risk over having fixed contract sizes. Now when using fixed dollar risk or fixed percentage risk, I'm going to adjust the contract size per trade to maintain a fixed risk of $1000. So you can see throughout each of these trades, I have a risk of $1,000 or 1R. Now let's use the previous example where we lost the first two trades and then won the last one and see how this works out with consistent position sizing. And then we'll discuss how to determine our position size. So using that example, losing the first two trades, you can see down one R or $1,000. Now I'm down another R or another $1,000. But on this last trade, because I'm position sized correctly, this 4R is actually 4R. And so then I end up being up 2R or $2,000 when in compared to the last slide, we were down $800. So how do I determine how many contracts I take? Well, it's really easy with CFDs because I can just use decimals. However, with futures contracts, you can't have half a contract. And this is why I like to use micros because it allows more flexibility in my position size. I want to get as close to that $1,000 of risk as possible. Now, how do I determine how many contracts or micros I need to take? Well, I use my defined risk, in this case, $1,000, my value per point for the instrument. So on NQ, that's $20 per point, and then my stop size. So in this first example, risking $1,000 and a 20 point stop, I have 1,000 divided by 20, because that's NQ, and then divide by 20, which is my stop size, which gives me 2.5 contracts. Now, if I want to get from contracts to micros, I just move the decimal over one or multiply by 10. So in this next example with 40 points of risk, I would take 1000 divided by 20, which is NQ's value per point, and then my stop size of 40, which gives me 1.25, or if I multiply by 10, 12.5 micros, 
And since I can't take half a micro, I would round down personally. And then here in this last example, risking 1000, MQ's value is 20 per point, and I have a 10 point stop, which gives me five MQ contracts or 50 micros. Now, although I know how to calculate my position size manually, it does take time and there are easier ways to do it. Now, there are a lot of calculators and tools out there. I've gone ahead and created two spreadsheets, which I will link in the description below, that are very simple calculators for calculating position size. I'll do a brief overview of both of those here. Now, taking a look at the futures calculator here, the first thing I want to do is fill out which contracts I generally trade and the value per point for them. So you can see NQ has $20 per point, ES $50 per point. The next thing I'm going to do is fill out the account size I am trading and my desired risk per trade. It will then calculate my risk per trade in a dollar value. And then taking a look at the table below here, I can see that with what stop size, how many contracts I should be taking. So for example, here on MES, if I have a five point stop, I'm going to be taking 10 contracts. If I have a six point stop, I'll be taking eight contracts. If I go over to MNQ, you can see if I have a 15 point stop, I'll have eight contracts, 20 point stop, six contracts. And if this doesn't go out far enough, I can just go in and adjust it such as so, drag it down and determine my stop size I need. Now, taking a look at the Forex calculator, the first thing I wanna do is figure out with my broker, what is the price per pip or per point for each instrument that I am trading and fill them out in this table here. From here, I then go choose my account size or type it in. So if I have a 100k account, I'll just adjust that here, my desired risk per trade, and then it will spit out a fixed dollar risk. Then selecting which instrument I am looking to trade, my stop size in pip or points, and then it will give me a lot size for that trade. Now with both of these sheets, make sure you file, make a copy, or else you won't be able to adjust any of this info. And please do not request access as it just sends me a bunch of emails. Now the next thing I want to discuss is using TradingView's risk reward tool to determine position size. So you can see here I have an entry, a stop. So I want to double click in here and make sure this information is all correct. Let's say I have a 100k account risking 1%. Now because I'm in Forex with EU, I want to make this lot size 1000. So from here, you can see it spits out a quantity of 14.92. So pulling up this example on the screen, that is not the actual quantity I want to enter. I want to enter 14.92 by moving the decimal over two spots. Now what I do is I right click, save this template as 100k Forex. Then whenever I go to trade EU on a 100k account, I can load this template in and it will be correct. Now if I was going to do a similar thing on futures, and in this case the NASDAQ, I'm going to have to adjust the settings in the risk to reward tool. So you can see with our current settings on the Forex, it's giving a quantity of 0 0.003. So I need to adjust that. And for futures, I use a one in the lot size. And then this is giving me the correct quantity. So to risk $1,000 with this stop size, I need 2.817 contracts, or if I'm going to be using micros, 28 micros. Now, before I do anything, I will wanna save this as a template for a 100k account on index futures. And for this trade, I would have to take 2.18 contracts. However, you cannot do that with minis. So we will drop down to the micros to take 28 and I'll show you some stuff there. So looking at the same trade on the micros here, you can see our quantity is now 28. And that's because micros are one tenth of a mini. Now the cool thing you can do in TradingView with the risk to reward tool is when you hit create a limit order on this already created risk to reward tool, you can see how much you're gonna risk with your stop and take profit. You can see I'm risking $994 here. So then by placing that order, you can see I get a limit order there, my stop, and then my take profit. And once again, this shows you how using micros is much more flexible with position sizing than using minis. The last thing I'm gonna quickly discuss is position sizing with futures prop firm accounts. Let's say I get a 25K account. Do I have access to $25,000? No, I really have a $1,500 account because that is the drawdown size. So if I was going to risk 1% of this account size, how much am I actually risking? I'm risking 17% of the drawdown size. If I was to lose six or seven trades in a row, then that account is blown. So generally on futures prop firms, I'm not looking to risk 1% of the overall account size. 
Instead, I am focused on the drawdown amount. So for a 25k account, I have $1,500 in drawdown. I put that over here, and then from here I can see risking what percent of the drawdown gives me how many trades until I lose the account. So I want to look between 10 and 7% generally on these accounts, because that gives me 10 to 15 trades that I can lose in a row before losing the account. Then going back to sheet 1, I will adjust this from the account size to the drawdown size, and then I will adjust the risk per trade from 7 to 10%. And that is how I personally do it. Now what I talked about there is for evaluations. Generally once funded, I lower my risk, which gives me the ability to lose more trades and have a larger cushion. And with Forex prop firms, the concept is exactly the same, it just is different numbers. I hope you found this video helpful and insightful. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you guys next week.